Hi, uh, welcome to the AMAZE SENDIAS workshop, the annual review process and getting the most out of your EHC plan. My name is Gaynor and I've been working um, at AMAZE for about three years now. Um, I was previously in education for about 30 years um, as a teacher, um, as a SENCO as well for a short while and a, a deputy head and a head. And I'm now working at Amaze um, on the other side of, of things, um, supporting uh, parents and carers um, to get um, uh, things for their child in place. And I'm thoroughly enjoying it. Um, my colleague Siobhan is also uh, leading this workshop with me. So Siobhan, if you'd like to introduce yourself as well. Um, hello, um, I've also been working at Amaze for three years. Um, I work mainly on the helpline I'm um, speaking to parents over the phone. I'm a parent myself um, and I've got a long-standing history in disability rights and a special interest in autism. Um, today's session, um, myself and, Sh and Siobhan are going to be uh, sharing a PowerPoint with you. Um, just so, so that you're aware from the outset, of course, and I'm sure you may already know this, that what we're saying um, throughout this workshop is, is in fact the law, but what we know in reality is that what we're saying doesn't always happen. Um, at various points, um, we will also uh, mention some, some questions that, that previous parents have had uh, when we've done these workshops, so we can um, add a bit of extra information uh, throughout the workshop to you. And also at the, at the end, um, I will go through some of the, the guidance that we have at Amaze that we could uh, also share with you, with you um, if you need to, once you've uh, followed this workshop, if you feel you need some more guidance, then, then you can get back to us and we can share that with you. Okay, uh, I'm going to share the, the PowerPoint now and then we can get started. All right, so we'll, we'll start with our first slide. So um, annual reviews. By the end of the workshop, we would hope, myself and Siobhan would hope that you would have a better understanding of your child's EHC plan, each of the sections within it, and what a good plan should look like. We would also hope that um, you have a better understanding of how to ensure that the plan is fit for purpose and is specific, how to prepare for the annual review, reading through the reports, asking for new assessments if necessary, um, what is involved in the annual, annual review process, uh, before the annual review meeting, the meeting itself, and what should happen after the meeting. And lastly, what to do if you disagree with the local authority decision following the review meeting, the plan status, the description of need and provision and school place. So there's quite a lot there that we are going to be getting through doing this workshop and we will do it bit by bit. So we will look at um, the before the annual review, the actual uh, the meeting itself and then after the meeting. So we'll break it all up into small parts so that it's uh, hopefully very, very clear and straightforward. Okay. Um, hello. Um, so the plan itself is um, maintained by the local authority. They're responsible for keeping it up to date. And so as part of that, they are required and required by law to review it every 12 months, at least every 12 months. So you see there in the slide, it says must. That means by law. It's not assured. It's not guidance it's a requirement um, and that's a um, it has to be done at least every 12 months there are lots of reasons why it needs to be sometimes needs to be done early so there are times when an emergency review needs to be called um, say if a child is out of school um, or there's other evidence that the plan is clearly not working um, the plan must focus on progress to achieving um, the child's outcomes. That's, that's, the, that's the whole idea of the plan. Um, 
and it must be undertaken in partnership with the child and their parent carer and it must take into consideration their views wishes and feelings so you and your child are key to the review process you need to be involved um, you should be involved but you shouldn't feel excluded um, from this process um, there are times and other times where the plan may need to be done early so we call these phase transfers. So when a child is moving from infant to primary or uh, primary to secondary or um, secondary to college, these are called phase transfers and they, they're particularly important because a lot is changing at that time. Um, so when a child is transferring between schools, the plan must be amended and the process completed by the 15th of February. So everything's in place for the following September. And when a young person is moving to college, the process must be completed by the 31st of March. Um, now, a simple review can take from eight weeks um, when there's not a great deal changing through to um, it can take up to a year. Um, so usually not that long, um, but yes, it can do occasionally. Um, the as Gaynor mentioned, the review involves several processes. When we speak to people, we, they often think of the annual review as the meeting that you have. And the meeting is very important, but it's not just about the meeting, it's about what happens before the meeting and what happens after the meeting. And that's what is the, the whole review. Um, and as, the review is all about seeing what needs have changed, um, have the outcomes been met, and is the provision still relevant to meet those needs? So that's that's the key. Um, next slide, Gaynor, please. So the review process has four main parts. The first part is the parental consultation, um, and that should you know the preparation that should take two weeks that takes place two weeks before the meetings so there might be new reports from professionals that need to be shared you'll be invited to um, contribute it's a good time for you to prepare for the meeting um, then there's also the meeting itself um, and as we mentioned before you are a key person for that meeting and in fact the meeting can't go ahead unless you're there um, the parents there that's the only person who's essential for the the meeting um, you might want to think about other people you might want to come along to the meeting with you often we recommend that a friend uh, accompanies you to the meeting if you're thinking of going alone um, you should be given notice of the time and the venue um, and Gaynor's going to talk about, oh, sorry, I'm going to talk about more detail of the actual meeting later. And Gaynor will talk about um, the report, or maybe the reporting, and the, we'll talk about the LA decision as well in more detail. Um, but four weeks after the meeting date, the local authority has to um, let you know what the decision is about the um the, the plan, whether it has is being maintained, changed, or um, ceased. Will I hand over to you now, Gaynor? Yeah, my turn next. Okay, this is a this is a big part of um, the annual review process, and that is preparing for the meeting, um, which is why it's important that you have several weeks in which to do this. Um, thinking back to 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 um, conversations we've had, we've had with parents uh, on the helpline and also in previous annual review workshops like this, um, this particular part about preparing for the meeting always comes as a little bit of a surprise to some parents, um, especially if they haven't been given notice, enough notice of, of when the meeting is. Um, the, the parental contribution is absolutely vital um, and you need to have enough time to put across your views and your your feel it, your feelings about the progress or or lack of progress possibly that may have been made 
um, in the last year for your child. So um, parental contribution, read through perhaps what you contributed last year um, and highlight the changes. Um, the form that you are given by the local authority um, is usually quite basic. Uh, so we suggest that you might want to think about other things to include. We have a uh, parental contribution guidance, um, uh, which we can share with you. Um, so if you're interested in having that guidance to help you prepare for your meeting, we can um, certainly ensure that you get one of our, our, our parental guidance. Um, think about um, what the guide states needs to be in, in each section. Um, think about your child's contribution and their involvement, because that is sometimes overlooked and after all it is the child's plan so a contribution from from them uh, details about uh, their play their health their uh, how their schooling is going how you feel their schooling is going um, friendships future education and future plans if you're at that point um, in a transition sort of annual review um, Think about how your young person um, communicates, so how best it would be to involve them um, in the, you know, hearing their voice. Uh, again, we have guidance about that too. We have a young people's worker called Sally, who has helped us put together um, some, some guidance on how a young person, how a child, a young person, person can contribute to their uh, educational healthcare plan. So again, we have guidance on that that we can share with you as well. Um, consider uh, what you wrote last year um, and how that might, might have changed. Um, sometimes when uh, the child's contribution is put forward, it may have been done at school um, with either the, the class teacher or the Senko or, or an INA, um, it's really important that perhaps they do a bit of, of that at home as well. Um, again, thinking about parents that have talked to us, um, if you are in the unfortunate position that you're not having a very good relationship with the school um, and things have broken down, the child may not feel comfortable about sharing their views and having their voice heard in the school environment, they would feel perhaps far more comfortable um, talking to, to an adult at home. So if the only contribution to the annual review process is something that's been done in school, it would be a good idea to have something that's been done at home as well. Um, and lastly on the list to prepare is to look through um, any recent reports that you may have. Um, Sometimes there aren't any new reports or any that are particularly significant, but if you have got some, you would certainly want those to be shared and discussed at the annual review meeting. So have a look through those to ensure that significant information that is in those reports is then going to be discussed at the meeting so they can be added into the EHC plan um, when it's in its draft form. Um, it's also a good idea to take a copy of the EHC, EHC plan with you. I mean, you would expect that when you get to the meeting that it is there for you produced and shared. But we have heard again from parents that that isn't always the case. So always best if you can to take uh, a copy of the, of the EHC plan with you. Um, um, look through, as we say, look through everything that you contributed last year, look through the plan as it is now um, to see, you, you know, if you're happy with it or if there are particular things that you absolutely need to discuss at the meeting so that um, your voice is heard and um, yeah, everything gets discussed that you want to be discussed. Okay, Siobhan. Um, right, so who will be invited to attend the meeting? So what usually happens is the local authority will um, alert the schools each term to 
which plans need to be reviewed that term and let the schools know when they need to be done by. Um, and then the school sends out the invitations. So they will invite you or they should invite you. Um, uh, there'll be a representative from the school um, usually the head teach, sorry, usually the SENCO, but it might be the head teacher or another teacher. Um, the local authority caseworker will always be invited as well. Um, they often, for, for straightforward reviews, um, often don't come, but if, if there is, um, a, if it's a transition review, um, it's, or if there is any problems that are occurring or major changes to the plan expected, it's a good idea for them to be there. And you can um, contact your caseworker and request that they attend the meeting, um, particularly if you've got concerns or maybe things aren't going very well with the school. Um, the, our, it is also a, an EHC plan. So there's health care as well, health and care involved in the plan. So. Um, Healthcare professionals and social care professionals will be invited as well. In a lot of cases, um, uh, there's very little in the plans from healthcare or social care. But if there has been um, somebody, you know, a medical person involved or a social worker involved, um, even if they can't attend the meeting, it'd be very useful if they, they send a report. So that if there is an involvement, they should do that. Um, it can go ahead with just the same and parent and it often does. Um, and that's appropriate in, in many cases. As we mentioned before, you can um, ask the school if you would like um, a friend to come with you. Um, and that's completely reasonable to do. Um, most meetings are held at the school, but that's not a legal requirement. So, um, you can, if you wish, request that it's held at a neutral venue if there's some reason why you don't want it to be held at the school, um, and that should be allowed. Um, the child, your child can come to the meeting with you. Um, that's a decision for, for you and your family and what's appropriate. Um, sometimes what works best is for a child to come in for part of the meeting. Um, but not the whole meeting. Um, and of course, nowadays, a lot of meetings are being held by Zoom um, or similar video calls. So think how comfortable you are with the with that situation. Do you have somewhere quiet to take part in the meeting? Would it be better to go to a friend or neighbor's house for the meeting if you're doing it by Zoom, if you've got a very busy household and don't have space? Um, so that's the the basics of the meeting. Um, is there anything you wanted to add, Gaynor? Um, only just to, to emphasise a few of the things that you've just said, Siobhan, and that's about, um, you mentioned that a meeting can go ahead that will, could be just the parent and the senko, that can happen. Um, but under no circumstance at all should a meeting go ahead without you as the parent. Um, you know that that absolutely can't happen that is not okay um so yeah just be aware of that that if you get uh, you should not ever have them tell you oh no we've already had the annual review because that, yeah. that shouldn't happen um and also the other point that you made Siobhan about taking someone along with you I think it's really helpful in, in any meeting that you have which particularly you know a school meeting like this one that's you know really key really important to have someone else with you that can be an extra pair of ears or can be taking some notes or you know prompting you if there are certain things that you're forgetting that you wanted to mention or, or just really for moral support I just think it would be yes yeah, really yeah. good to have a, a yes. friend or another member of the family to go with you so yeah okay next slide then thank you um so if you haven't had a meeting before or even if you have, you might be quite concerned about what's the meeting actually like. Um, so we would expect that there should be introductions. You should know who people are, you know, and if there's somebody sitting there, and you don't know who they are, you know, do ask. Um, so there should be introductions. If a child is coming to the meeting, um, 
people should introduce themselves to the child too. Um, people should say what they're planning to get from the meeting. Um, it's important to see who what the roles are, who's going to be taking minutes. If you've got a friend with you, um, perhaps they could take some notes for you. Um, if it's the Senko, it's often the Senko is going to take some notes and send them to you afterwards. Um, and then the body of the meeting, that, that why you're doing it is really to, um, to focus on the plan. So it should focus on the plan and not, you know, just some incident that happened last week, because this is a plan for the next year. Um, and we'll go through the sections of the plan and you're um, looking at gathering and assessing any, any new information that can be used by the school or early years provider or the college um, to help the child progress and access their learning. Um, you need to review the special educational provision made for the child or young person to ensure it's being effective in ensuring access to teaching and learning and good progress. So it's really looking to see, is it working? Um, and um, the bits that often get left behind are um, health and social care. So even if a plan was originally focused on education, over time, perhaps health and social care might become um, more important. So have a look at those sections too. Perhaps some new assessments need to be done around um, either health or social care as the child gets older. Um, and next slide, please, Gaynor. Um, so it, the plan should really be focusing on outcomes and whether they've been achieved, setting new outcomes for the, the young person or child. Um, and just checking as well whether the, the, the need as described in section B is still appropriate. Have there been any new diagnoses since? Um, but this, this point here, it says, consider the continuing appropriateness of the EHC plan in the light of the child or young person's progress during the previous year or changing circumstances and whether changes are required, including any changes to outcome enhanced provision, change of educational establishment, or whether the plan should be discontinued. So there should be some discussion in the meeting um, about the status of the plan. Um, by that, I mean, should the, it, you shouldn't get any surprises in the post. It should be discussed in the meeting if there's any um, thoughts that the plan needs to be ceased or changed, sort of amended. Um, or whether they're planning to continue as it is. So you should know by the end of the meeting one, which of those three options it's going to be. Um, sometimes there'll be a discussion of the appropriateness of the school setting. Is it still the right school setting for, for the child or young person to attend? Um, from year nine and above, there needs to be a focus on preparing for adulthood. So um, that's thinking about education and employment or training, independence in the community, health and a place to live. Um, so that's part of the preparing for adulthood. That's from year nine onwards, that needs to, to be part of the meeting. Um, and there's also, if you um, wish to request a personal budget, this can only be done during the annual review process. So, and not like six months down the line. So if that's something you're interested in, it needs to be brought up at the annual review. Um, and if that's something you want to more information on, we can provide that. Um, that's not something a lot of people go for, but it is an option. So a personal, budget allows people to understand how the money's being um, uh, allocated to different services and um, in some circumstances um, direct payments can be a pro an appropriate use of the, the budget which is where you're more involved in um, organizing the services. 
Um, if there's a disagreement in the meeting, then the chair or who's taken the, needs to minute this and acknowledge the different viewpoints. Um, and can, you know, if your child's there, obviously it has to be handled delicately and consideration will need to be made if they're in the room. Um, then it should be clear who's going to um, summarize what the discussion and who's responsible for follow-up actions. Um, and so after the meeting, you should get a copy of the meeting minutes so that you can say what you think about the, um, you know, it, it, it was everything in the meeting, in the minutes that um, was discussed, were all the disagreements noted, because those minutes will, that the will form part of the report that goes to the local authority at the next stage. Um, and that's it. Gaynor, do you want to add anything there? Yeah, um, uh, just one, one or two things. Um, again, what we hear from, from parents, because there are some parents, I think, um, that are a little bit confused as to what exactly this meeting is and what they what they can and can't bring to the meeting. Um, one of the points uh, here on this slide talks about um, the young person's progress during the previous year or changed circumstances and whether changes are required, including any changes to outcomes. Um, I'm thinking in particular of parents that talk to us about um, they may not have had a new diagnosis, for example, or they may have, that might be something, they might have had a new diagnosis from one year to the next, um, maybe a, an autism diagnosis, an ADHD diagnosis, and clearly if there's something as significant as that that has happened, that report, that assessment needs to, to be shared, um, and recommendations from the paediatrician, consultant, or whatever professional was involved needs to be added into this educational healthcare plan. It may not be something as significant as that. It may be that um, in that annual review meeting itself, when things are being discussed by the various professionals and the school about the young person, that it becomes apparent that new assessments are needed. Um, or maybe that as a parent yourself, you might be thinking, do you know what I think my, my child needs is some support from an occupational therapist or speech and language team in which case that is a good time to bring that up for everyone to talk about that at, at that meeting so that a, you know a formal request can be made to a for a referral for another professional to become involved so it's things like that that i think sometimes get forgotten and then when the annual review process is over you're then faced with, oh no, what now? What do I do? I wanted to, I wanted my child to have this assessment. When can I? When can I say that? This is the very time in which you you can talk about that sort of thing, so that you can get get those things moving and in place for your child or young person as, as soon as possible. So yeah, I just thought you know that yes. made me think of that because um, yes. we often have they have that sort of thing mentioned on on helpline calls as well about how do I go about getting this and how do I go about getting that. Um, um, going back to one of the other slides as well, you know, if this is a, a, a transitional sort of annual view where a child or young person is moving from, from one phase of education to another, it is really important that there is um, someone from the local authority there. Um, because we have heard of times where um, that um, moving into adulthood has not been discussed at the last annual review, and then parents have got um, uh, a letter from the local authority to say that their plan is being ceased when that wasn't discussed at all at the meeting. So it's really important if your child is at that, at that phase transfer stage that the, your um, SEN caseworker is there at the meeting as well. Um, I also just thought to say um, some people, some parents will often expect small changes to be incorporated into the plan and it isn't for the 
you know, when a plan is being updated year on year, there will be small changes, obviously, to the interim targets. And that would usually go in the appendices rather than the main plan. Yeah. Um, so just let you know that, that it isn't expected that the plan will be amended every year. Um, most years, you know, it will be maintained and there'll be, there will be changes added to the appendices, but not to the main plan. Mm -hmm. um, but it's at those key stages of transition or if things aren't going well, or when new information comes to light, um, that's when a plan might need more significant changes and that, that counts and that, that's when it would be amended. Okay, so you've prepared for the meeting, hopefully as best as you possibly can. You've gone along to the meeting with, with someone and, and let's assume that everyone that you wanted to be at the meeting was at the meeting um, and it's gone really well. I'm being trying to be really positive here. And then what can you expect after the meeting? Um, because what shouldn't happen is that you have the meeting and then you don't hear any more at all. So what should happen is that within two weeks of the meeting, school uh, send a report to, to the parents and the local authority and all who attended the meeting which is why it is a good thing having someone with you at the meeting as, as, as both Siobhan and myself have been saying, so that it, there's someone that can, that can make some notes as well. So that when you receive a report from the meeting, um, you can compare what the report says to the notes that you've made, just to make sure that everything that was discussed points um, that that you raised and the school raised, actions that were set down as for someone to carry out have all been put on the report. Um, that's really important. Um, it might be worthwhile uh, that they, it doesn't always happen, but it's a good thing if a report is sent to the parents first before it gets sent to the local authority so that there's time for, for the parent to, you know, to look at it and, and make, any any changes if they spot anything that's not, that's not that's not accurate, and then everyone gets um, a copy of that. Um, it, and it, as we said, it should be clearly stated if there were differences of opinion raised at the meeting, um, that shouldn't be overlooked. Um, if you disagree with the report, you should you shouldn't feel that you can't go back to the Senko and ask them to be amended before it gets sent to the local authority. That's absolutely fine. Um, the local authority then decide if they're going to um, maintain the plan so keep it as it is and like Siobhan was saying um, to maintain it with perhaps um, a few changes in, in, the, in the appendices if they're going to have an amended plan so if there are perhaps significant changes that need to be made if there's a new diagnosis or there are new reports from other professionals um, or anything really significant, then the, the, the plan will be amended in the light of that. Or if it's going to be ceased. Uh, so, and, and as we were saying just now, that, that would mean that all the outcomes have been met, that n there's n it's no longer necessary to have specialist provision, or that the, the young person is leaving education. So, that would be the only reasons as to why a plan would be ceased. And as we said before, this should not come as a surprise if you've had those minutes or report from, from the meeting um, prior to getting your decision letter. Um, it shouldn't come as a surprise that uh, the plan is, is going to be ceased. Um, and they must uh, inform you of this uh, um, by four weeks after the meeting. They'll write to you with, it, with their decision. Um, and then a copy of the original plan will be sent to you as the parent uh, with the amendments as an accompanying note with the plan. You then have 15 days, so it's not, not that long, 15 days to request changes. And it is at this point too that you can also uh, discuss a change of, of, of placement if that is something that you are thinking about. Um, and then the local authority have eight weeks to, to finalise the plan or decide not to agree to any amendments that you want. 
Now, it, we're not leaving this right to the end on purpose, but this is where it needs to be mentioned. And I think Siobhan has actually um, made reference to this anyway, is that in reality, the local authority should really sort of get on with finalizing the plan, especially if there's not an awful lot that needs to be changed anyway. But technically, there is no set period for this, except that the plan must be finalized before the next annual review, um, which does seem strange. Um, they need to be getting the draft sent out, um, you know, by nine months from the review meeting. Um, and in this case, the annual review process isn't, isn't complete until you have the final plan. So um, it, it, it isn't that uh, often that it takes you know a whole year before they issue the final plan and it is worth you know keeping in contact with your um, SEN casework officer to find out what what is going on um, uh, if you've sent in any amendments that you want you know check what's happening um, particularly if you are thinking of a change of placement then it's important that a final plan is issued to you so that um, you know, if you if you are then faced with um, wanting to appeal a decision or something, you need to do that soon as soon as possible. Um, um, could I just add, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, um, uh, if while you're waiting for the final plan, that the old plan still has legal weight, so yeah. they can't take away anything from the old plan while you're waiting for the new plan. That's still you know, they can't take any of the services in that plan away, let's yeah. say. Yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, good point, actually, yeah. It, it, it isn't a case that, oh, the plan um, ceases whilst you're waiting for the, the final plan to be issued. No, the, the plan, uh, you know, is still in use, as you say, in, in, um, and then the new one will replace it when it, when it comes through. Um, so we won't, in, in this particular uh, workshop, we won't go into um, details about the whole appeal process and all that. That's a whole new workshop that, um, as you can imagine, has a, a lot of information with it. So we won't, we won't talk about that now. So we've covered quite a lot um, in, the, in this workshop. Um, hopefully it's been clear to you. Um, it might be that that you knew all that and, and your annual reviews that you've had before have happened smoothly and satisfactorily. It might be that you've not had an annual review before and so this is all, all new to you. Um, so in that case, I hope that, that it's, it's made it a little clearer. As, as I said at the beginning, um, we have, let me just move on to here, I've got our number up. We have, um, a lot of, of guidance that is, is helpful for this whole process that we can share with parents. Um, we have got guidance to the annual review process itself, which sets out just like this PowerPoint, you know, the stages step by step as from the beginning to end, pre-meeting, meeting and after meeting, um, with the timeframes included. We've got some guidance on making your parental contribution and also um, the young person's contribution. Um, uh, we have got a guide to checking your draft plan, which is really important. So at that point, when you get your draft plan and you only have 15 days in which to check it through, um, that, isn't, that isn't a long time. And um, it is important to really go through that plan with a highlighter pen, um, checking that everything in section B the needs of your child or young person uh, and section F, the provision um, that should be in place for your child or your young person all completely match up. So for every need, there should be a, a, a provision. Um, so our checking your draft plan guide goes through that step by step, picking out um, words and phrases that um, are a little bit vague um, and suggesting words that should be in, in its place. Um, we've also got some guidance, um, fairly new guidance about outcomes and, and what are outcomes and what should they look like and what does it mean if an outcome has been achieved or not achieved. So we've got some guidance on that too. 
And uh, Siobhan touched on a little bit about personal budgets, direct payments, personal budgets. That is something, again, that you can only really request at an annual review. Um, and we have got some guidance on, on what that is, is as well. So we can um, share that with parents. Um, yeah, um, that's about, about it, I think. So I hope you found it uh, useful. That's the end of the PowerPoint um, and uh, the workshop. Thanks. Thanks very much for um, coming to our workshop. I hope you found it useful. Um, I'd like to say goodbye from um, me and Siobhan and get in touch with the helpline if ever you need to. Thank you. Bye.